welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons make sure you like and subscribe so this is a practical techniques video and it looks at the preparation and purification of an organic liquid so the overview of this practical there are five main stages to this practical there's the chemical reaction stage followed by separating of your crude product then you would purify your crude product you would test the purity of your product and then you would usually carry out a percentage yield calculation let's look at each stage in detail then so the chemical reaction stage the first thing we would need to do would be to measure out our reactants either by mass if a reactant was a solid or we would be measuring volume if the reactant was a liquid now later on when we do the percentage yield calculation we will need the mass so it's quite common to be given the density and therefore being able to calculate the mass because mass is density multiplied by volume most reactions would require heat so usually we'd use a reflux and we'd set up in the apparatus shown here in the diagram anti-bumping granules are often used because what they do is they they have smaller vapor bubbles will form within the mixture and it prevents that violent bubbling and larger bubbles that could cause the reactive mixture to jump up into the condensing uh, the condenser as you can see in the diagram water goes in at the bottom and out at the top so the the flow of water is always against gravity notice how the top of the tube is open that's correct we don't have a stopper and we don't have a thermometer here it's also very common for the heat source to either be a water bath or an electric heater that's because quite often in organic chemistry our reactants are flammable so we don't want to use a naked flame on occasions you may need to uh, you may be required to cool your reaction in which case you would then use an ice bath the next stage of the practical then is to isolate our crude product and that's done using simple distillation so what we do is we take our reaction mixture here which would contain all the products and any unreacted reactants we would heat it up until it's above the boiling point of our product which will then begin to evaporate notice how the bulb of the thermometer is at the opening of the condenser this will be sealed so the top of this is sealed so the vapors can't escape and what happens is our product will enter the condenser it will cool down and condense and we can collect our impure or prude crude product at this point here notice how water goes in at the bottom of the condenser and out at the top the flow of water is always against gravity to ensure that there are no air bubbles next up we need to purify our crude product this is often done in two different stages so first of all we're going to separate the organic layer from any aqueous layer because there's quite often this, this water involved in our reaction um, usually as, as a solvent for one of the reactants so what we do is we use a separating funnel and we allow the two layers to separate now the oil or the organic layer will always be on top and the water layer will always be on the bottom so we allow it to settle and then we simply open up that stopcock and allow the water layer to flow through and then we would close that stopcock leaving behind the oil layer so that's what happens there now what we'll often do at this point is add a drying agent such as calcium chloride because there will be traces of water within the organic layer so we add a drying agent calcium chloride to remove any traces of water and then once you've done this you can just decant your organic layer off leaving behind the calcium chloride we now have a dry crude product so the second stage of the purification is to remove any impurities from this product so distillation is used again and usually we would use fractional distillation um, particularly if the mixture of liquids have similar boiling points you can use simple distillation however fractional distillation is preferred at this point point. and once you separated it 
we can then use a drying agent again to remove any traces of water. We now have our pure product collected. Notice how fractional distillation is similar to simple distillation, except we have a fractionating column in the diagram there. Once we've isolated our pure product then, we need to test the purity of it. And this is done by checking and comparing the boiling point. So during the purification process of that distillation, you would note down the temperature at which it begins to boil on that thermometer from the fractional distillation, and you would measure the range of boiling. So when did it begin to boil over and when did you stop collecting your product? And you'd have a boiling point range. You would then compare this to how close it is to the actual boiling point and how narrow the range is. So for example, a pure liquid would have a very precise and exact boiling point and a very narrow range. The wider the range, the more impurities, and also the further away from the actual boiling point, the less pure it would be. So usually then the final step of any organic practical, once you've isolated your pure organic product, would be to record your mass of pure product, and then we would carry out a percentage yield calculation. Now, what I suggest we do before we start calculating moles is that we double check the stoichiometry in your reaction equation. Usually in organic reactions, it's a one-to-one -one ratio of your reactant to your product. So what you're going to do is calculate the theoretical maximum mass via a molar calculation and make sure that you're using the moles of the limiting reactant. And again, usually in your questions, it'll be quite obvious. You'll be told which one's in excess. So you're going to use the moles of your limiting. And again, as mentioned earlier, if you were using a liquid reactant, you're probably going to be given a volume and not a mass. However, you would be given the density and you can calculate the mass by density multiplied by volume. And then we can divide by the molecular mass to get our moles. Once you've got your moles of your reactant, you can then calculate the mass of your product, and that would be your theoretical maximum mass. And to calculate percentage yield, we take the mass that we obtained in the practical divided by the maximum theoretical, because the theoretical will always be bigger than our actual, and then we multiply by 100 to turn that into a percentage. And that's the end of that video. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and like.